Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. We're going to do our uh, weekly slash bi-weekly trip into the Great White North. Uh, up in Canada, I'm going to give everybody uh, a breakdown and kind of a current assessment of where we are with the Rizzuto mob in Montreal right now. Uh, we've obviously talked a lot about the Hells Angels and uh, Leo Rizzuto being, you know, kind of a, a, his organization coming under attack uh, over the last 18 months or so. And he's understandably laying really low right now. Uh, and I want to break down who's running the crime family on a day-to-day basis. It might, you know, they might be embattled um, and not the, you know, Roman Empire-esque dynasty that, or Ma- Roman Empire-esque mafia dynasty they were under Leo's dad, uh, Vito, and his grandpa, uh, Zio Nicolo. But, you know, it's still a name brand. It's like even when uh, the, the Yankees or the Knicks or the Lakers or the Cowboys or Manchester United or whatever, you know, they're, they're still formidable in, in the brand and you can't underestimate them. And I want to f- kind of focus this on who I'm being told is the, is the draw that's stirring the drink right now. Uh, and it's, it's, it's uh, noteworthy from, for where he comes from and a, a guy that hasn't been mentioned in a ton of coverage over the last 20 years, but he's a, he's turned into a major player. His name is Carmelo Canestraro. Uh, they call him mini meat. And um, that's a, uh, F, or not FPI, sorry. That's an SQ surveillance photo of him. And I'm told right now he is the conciliary, the possibly acting conciliary, uh, you know, number three in that organization right now. He stems from the, the Calabrese wing of this group, uh, formerly led by, uh, or not, I shouldn't say formally, headed by Frank Arcady, uh, Francesco Arcady, Campari Frank. Uh, who is really the only member of the only core member, I believe, of Vito Rizzuto's inner circle that is still alive 15 years after this war started to pop off. Now we have this, you know, these sub wars. Um, and even though things have gone quiet in this particular sub war of the, the Hells Angels versus the, uh, Rizzuto's in terms of the Italians themselves taking fire over the last you know handful of months, um, but the the proxies are are still, you know, they're they're, they're shoot on site orders. So it's it's interesting to note that Canestraro and Chit Del Basso, the uh, former Capo regime uh, enforcer, loan shark, collector, gambling mob gambling czar uh, who decided to go after the crown and got the Hells Angels back in to attack Leo Rizzuto, but it's from we, from what we know, it was based on the Rizzuto's putting a, a contract on Del Basso's head back in late 22. Um, nevertheless, it's, again, let's let's make note that both Del Basso and Canestraro come from Frank Ar- Frank Arcadi. They were both mentored by him. Canestraro was mentored in you know more diplomacy and logistics, uh, leadership. Del Basso was was mentored in being a ferocious, menacing mobster, uh, and Arcadi kind of was able to do both of those things. Uh, he, he was rougher around the edges than the Sicilian Rizzutos. Um, But based on what we heard from Del Basso himself prior to his assassination last summer, he was two weeks after the, the failed hit on Leo Rizzuto. He did an interview we found out a couple months ago. Well, we talked about it here. Uh, with uh, SQ and Montreal police regarding what was going on. And he named 
mini me. He said, Leo and Stevie, meaning little sauce, uh, alleged underboss uh, Stephen Solcito, um, took everything from Del Basso when Del Basso got out of prison uh, and gave it to mini me, according to Del Basso. Um, Del Basso also, I guess, was hoping that Canestraro would help mend fences for him and bridge some type of gap before things exploded and it never happened. And instead, Canestraro has, from what I'm told from sources and seeing some intelligence documents, has really benefited from Del Basso uh, being removed from the picture. First kind of pushed out of the Rizzuto organization and then and then killed. Uh, Street Boss right now is, is Baldi Barbario. Um, he's the one who's kind of on the day-to-day -day keeping uh, everything copacetic. He has a lot of connections in the Hells Angels, and I think the Angels are hesitant to go after him. Um, so that, that's just my analysis, and having him as the street boss might be actually beneficial. So it's him, it's it's mini me and it's you know little stevie who or sorry little sauce uh stevie solcito who's relaying messages from from what i'm told from uh rizzuto who's kind of gone underground to barbario canestraro and uh and and then that goes out to the street um canestraro's the kind of one of the first times his name came uh, up in the in the media in Montreal was in 2017 uh when things were going haywire with the with the, with the Scopa brothers and you know other people smell smell blood in the water uh and and some of his uh businesses uh, that were being fronted by his wife some hair salons and whatnot were um targeted uh, with fire bombings and, and, and shootings. So, you know, I think right now the, the key is to keeping this empire afloat and not, you know, what, what Marty Robert and the Hells Angels want to do, they want to absorb these guys um, and to prevent that from happening. I think it's, it's key for Leo Rizzuto, who's, who's proved really resilient here. Um, and, and only time will tell what his future holds, but empowering guys like Baldi, Bar Bar Baldi Barbario and in mini me Canestraro seems to be uh, beneficial for him. And, and they seem to be um, in very choppy waters, keeping the boat afloat and moving in the right direction. So that's, that's our update right now uh, from up in the great white North and what's going on in, in that very, very unstable and shaky Montreal underworld, specifically the Rizzuto, crime family. Scott Bernstein, OG Pod. I'm out.